Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. Um, I'm, I'm quite excited today to show you a little bit of a sample that I've been building to help some of the partners we're working with utilizing the activity feed in uh, Microsoft Teams. My name is Sebastian. I am a senior program manager on the Microsoft Graph. I am. I used to be a hardcore developer turned into a product manager. So um, I'm. I'm still, and that's why I love to do these these samples here to kind of stay connected to the technology, stay connected to developing. I've been a longtime community member, awarded MVP six times, and now I am working on the Microsoft Graph team uh, as part of Microsoft uh, to help partners and customers take advantage of Microsoft Graph as the API gateway to all of your Microsoft 365 data. A little bit of history here on, on why we came up with these, uh, this small sample that I'm going to show today. First, Microsoft has been amazing to help building and engaging apps via tabs, bot, personal apps, messaging extensions, um, all of these different capabilities that are offered uh, within Microsoft uh, Teams are having been extremely useful, but there was always one thing that was missing, which was to catch the attention of the users through the great activity feed uh, that Microsoft Teams always had. The Microsoft Graph have been providing capabilities to add notifications to the user's activity feed for potentially around six to nine months in, in beta. But now we're happy that it moved onto the V1. So now it's a fully supported workload. And we love this feature because it really creates a sticky app that people can come on and off of it. So that's really, really cool. So what will we do today? What will be kind of our scenario? First, we will create um, a new app leveraging any type of app you want to use within Microsoft Teams, either using the Teams Toolkit uh, using SharePoint Framework, using uh, the PNP Teams generator called Yo Teams, or even if you have your own in-house ways of building Teams apps, you can use any of that to um, build what we're going to have to do. We're going to use the U a Fluent UI to build some of the components that we'll uh, be building on our interface, where we're going to see uh, the notifications flow from one user to the other. We'll also use the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, which is a great UI uh, connected to the Microsoft Graph. So web components pre-baked, pre-connected to the Microsoft Graph to um, use some of the out-of-the-box controls that it offers, uh, including here the login control, the people picker control, but also some of its providers to be able to create some uh, extra graph calls to, in this case, send a notification to our users. And finally, we're going to use the Microsoft Graph to send notifications to the target user. So let me show you what um, I'm talking about here. So let me go here. Let me do this here. And let me do this right here. There we go. So now I have an application. This application is a kudos application, meaning that it you can send to your colleagues thumbs up on the great work that they've been doing with you. So I'm logged in right now with two different browsers. On the left, the one that is a little bit uh, lighter, there's my name right there, Sebastian, that is connected in a Teams app. On the other screen, we have Adele that is connected with our own credential in another Teams app. This here is to illustrate that you need to have two users, right, to be able to send you notifications because you're always sending it to somebody else. You cannot send notifications to yourself. So just as a quick demo, let's say that I'm here and I want to send a message or a kudos to Adele, where I'm going to select here that she went the extra mile. Thanks for going the extra mile on that last project. Then I'm going to hit submit. While it submits the kudos, we are using the Microsoft Graph to send this information. And in, oh, that's interesting. Let me just reload my screen. My token renewal is uh, not effective. I'm going to do the same thing with the Dell at the same time. The, the joys of live demos are always the same. 
Thanks for being awesome. I'm going to hit submit. It's going to send my kudos using the Microsoft Graph to Adele. Now, Adele just received, and you see it, there's a new uh, small notification uh, on the bell, on the activity bell. And there's also a toast notification that you, you, you were able to see at the bottom uh, right. And when I go see the, the activity, I will actually, in the notification, I will see that Sebastian sent you a kudos for extra mile with the message, thanks for being awesome. So these are the types of capabilities that you can build within your own applications to really bring people back to your application. Keep in mind that these notifications are very contextualized to where you want the user to be in Teams. So if you want to bring the user to a specific channel tab, because there's something new for that user in this context, you can do it. If you want to bring your user to a personal app where um, you uh, want to uh, signify that there's something new for them, you can also do that. You want to bring somebody to a chat or to a channel conversation, all of that is fully available. Um, we built a couple of uh, weeks ago a full sample. So all of the code I'm showing today is available online. We're going to uh, uh, see all the links um, afterwards. If you are going to be able to follow with this guide, um, part of the Microsoft Graph mailbag, which is a series of blog posts we're uh, making on the Microsoft Graph to help you with simple tasks with Graph, but to really enrich your apps. And if you go through this one, you can uh, learn how to create engaging apps with the Microsoft Teams Activity Feed API. So if you follow this, this guy here, um, you will be able to find how to create apps for Teams, how to, uh, how to create notifications for a channel, for a chat, or any of those. But now I want to dive a little bit deeper and show you how this app is being built, not just to show it, but I want you to see um, what is under the cover. First, let's start with our manifest. Each Teams app has a manifest representing uh, the description, the titles, the colors, the icons, the tabs, the bots, and everything. But since we have uh, the um, activity uh, information available now, there's also an activities area where each app can predefine which type of activity they support. And this is really important because you cannot just start sending random notifications to anybody in Microsoft Teams. That user needs to have an app. The app you're targeting needs to be installed on their, on their own Teams client. But also, you have to define what are the messages. And here, here you see you can only send a kudos to a user. So it's a very railed experience. So that way, you're not going to be able to start spamming users just for the sake of spamming. You really need to control how notifications will happen. And that is great because that really brings a sentiment of choice. And also, these can be turned on or off as part of the team's notification setting. So you can decide that you want to enable or disable some of these notifications based on how chatty they might be with you. So that's the first thing you want to do. You want to say, hey, I will be using this activity, and I want Teams to react when a new activity is sent when this user has this app installed. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to actually build the app. So a couple of areas that I want to focus on here. The first one is this. This one here is how we are enabling the use of the Microsoft Graph in this app. We're leveraging Microsoft Graph Toolkit as a way to get access to um, our Microsoft Graph data to authenticate ourselves. And we're also using the Graph Toolkit to define which are the permissions that I need to run my app. I'm using three permissions here that are related to the login control and to the people picker. So if I go back to my app here and I look at here, the people picker is this one and the login control is this one on the right. So these are the permissions, these ones here are the permissions that are used to kind of run my UI. The two other permissions are permissions that are required to be able to build my notifications. The first one is the ability to request that I want to send a Teams activity. 
And also, I want to be able to read all the apps that exist in the app catalog. So that way, I can know what is the ID of the app that I want to target. So that way, we can send a notification through the right app in the end. So these are all the permissions. So automatically, when I'm going to log in, um, we're going to get a consent. So uh, by, by Microsoft Graph Toolkit, it's going to ask me, do you allow all of these permissions? I'm going to say yes. And afterwards, I want to move on to a next section, which is this one here. So basically, here I have a very simple React uh, built with uh, uh, the Fluent UI that allows me to create my provider with the right theme, all my different um, um, columns and, and rows that are in there. The thing that I think is the most important, right, is this one at the end, is the button. Is when I click send notification, what is happening? When I send a notification, this is where I do a lot of my Microsoft Graph calls. So let me go on the send notification right here. Looks like I'm awaiting that method here. So I'm gonna go right here and it looks like I'm gonna need the graph service, which is a service that I use for um, connecting to graph, which basically in that case here, sends a notification. It does two things. The first thing, it validates that the user, that the, that the user I'm talking with has the app installed. So it gets the app from the app catalog using this API here. So basically graph.microsoft.com slash app catalogs slash Teams app. And then I just pass in what's the ID of the app that I'm looking for, which is the app that I know of, which is the app that was deployed to uh, the users. So I can get this app ID here. And then afterwards, if I have an app, so if this app was installed, I will be simply sending to the target user, the user that I selected in the people picker, I will be sending a notification using the API users slash ID slash teamwork slash send activity notification. I'm going to send a post message where I'm going to have a topic. First topic is of type text. The value is either the name of the category. In that case, I, I selected extra mile. Or if I don't select one, it's going to be called just kudos app. And a URL. The URL is where when I click on the actual uh, notification, where am I redirected? And that's why when I click on the notification, I was brought back directly to my app. So if I go here, for instance, and I go back to my activity here, when I click, it actually loads my app because it knows exactly what's the app ID, what's the tab name and everything. And here, I just specify what's the activity type that I want to do, what's the text, which is the message that the, the person did, and I'm sending it. So without a lot of lines of code, maybe a couple of, like maybe a hundred lines of code, we were able to build a fully working Kudos app that uses the Microsoft Graph Teams um, Activity Feed API, and we're able to have a full uh, Teams app available right here. A couple of links you might want to uh, have a look into uh, for Microsoft Graph. The SDK, the Microsoft Graph SDK JavaScript, the actual PNP sample here that you can use and, and start building with, and finally, the blog post that I just shared earlier to get you, uh, you guys running and be able to start playing around with this Activity Feed API. Over to you, Vesa. Thank you, Sebastian. Awesome work. And, and Microsoft Graph is, is, first of all, Microsoft Graph APIs are awesome. But then all of this abstraction which we've been able to implement on top of those APIs, like the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, is just going to speed up the development so much and, and make the development much, much, much easier for people. So awesome stuff. On the Graph Toolkit, by the way, just a reminder, we've been hearing this quite, quite often that, yeah, but it, it's the UX isn't really good. It's temp You can change the UX on the Graph Toolkit as well. You can adjust that. It, it, there's templating mechanisms, all of that in that as well. So we just need to be more provide more guidance on that as well. So it's really, really, really powerful uh, for numerous different scenarios. Thank you.